Anarchists held that fundamental social change can only be achieved through an international social revolution which abolishes capitalism and the state in favour of a libertarian socialist society. Anarchists were not naive and did not expect the international social revolution to appear out of nowhere. Instead they held that social change was a single process that could be divided into periods of evolution and periods of revolution. During periods of evolution, change is slow, gradual and partial. Evolutionary change therefore includes such things as certain ideas becoming more popular, small groups of people developing radical capacities and drives, or dominant structures being modified. Over time this evolutionary change builds up and culminates in a revolutionary period, during which change is rapid, large-scale, and fundamentally alters society, such as one dominant structure being replaced by another. Periods of evolution and revolution were not defined by the length of time they lasted, but by the kind of change which occurred within them. An evolutionary period could last only a few months, if the change which occurred during it was slow, gradual, and partial. Likewise, a revolutionary period could last several years, if during this period there was ongoing large-scale change, which occurred rapidly and fundamentally altered society, such as the French Revolutionary Period, which began in 1789 with the storming of the Bastille, and ended in 1799 with the seizure of state power by Napoleon Bonaparte. Evolutionary change and revolutionary change were not separate distinct entities, but rather fed off and flowed into one another. An evolutionary period would, for example, develop into a revolutionary period which fundamentally altered society. In so doing, this revolutionary period would create or open up new pathways that evolutionary change could move through in the future, while at the same time blocking off certain avenues for evolutionary change and altering the trajectory of evolutionary change which had existed prior to the revolutionary period. This new evolutionary change would in turn lead to new revolutionary change in the future, and so on. As Reclus argues, quote, evolution and revolution are two successive aspects of the same phenomenon. Evolution preceding revolution, and revolution preceding a new evolution, which is in turn the mother of future revolutions. Anarchists consistently express these ideas through water-based metaphors. Bakunin wrote in a letter to Reclus that, quote, We are falling back into a time of evolution, that is to say revolutions that are invisible, subterranean, and often imperceptible. Drops of water, though they may be invisible, may go on to form an ocean. Gilliam likewise states that, quote, It is not in one day that water rises to the point where they can breach the dam holding them back. The waters rise slowly and by degrees, but once they have reached the desired level, the collapse is sudden and the dam crumbles in the blink of an eye. For Berkman, evolutionary change leads into revolutionary change in the same way that water in a kettle gradually heats up until it boils. The anarchist usage of biological and geographical language should not be mistaken for the view that evolution and revolution are natural forces that inevitably propel human subjects towards a better society. Reclus understood that, quote, revolutions do not necessarily constitute progress, just as evolutions are not always directed towards justice. Malatesta similarly claimed that, quote, there is no natural law that says evolution must inevitably give priority to liberty, rather than the permanent division of society into two castes, that of the dominators and that of the dominated. These evolutions and revolutions, be they progressive or reactionary, were in turn nothing but the product of human beings, acting within their historical situation, and thereby transforming the world. Malatesta insisted that, quote, human evolution moves in the direction in which it is driven by the will of humanity. Ricardo Mella expressed this same idea when he argued that, quote, social evolution is constituted by men, these men constitute the means by which it develops. 
If you like this video, please follow me on Twitter and help fund my PhD by supporting me on Patreon. Thanks so much to everyone who has so far supported me on Patreon. You have made a massive impact on my life and I am forever grateful. What you just heard was an extract from my PhD on the revolutionary strategy of classical anarchism. Have a nice day everyone.